she said, do you have any tips on how to cut down on excessive screen time? So she has excess screen time in her Mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. And she's recognized that it's making her miserable, which is actually the first step because Mm -hmm. sometimes we're just so caught up in it, we don't realize what it's doing to us. I see this in my daughter who's eight. If we just were to give her a tablet all day and she were to stare at it, she starts to get in a bad mood but doesn't realize what is causing that bad mood. But it's the fact she's not moving and she's so tuned in with Mm -hmm. this glowing screen. Yeah that it is preventing her from living her life. Yeah. Nothing wrong with the glowing screen, but when we have excess of screen time, that certainly becomes a problem. So, yes, Kristen, I have six best practices for you on this Maximal episode. The first one is called Screenless Saturdays. Mm. Something Ryan and I came up with. Jordan did a great job. He Dude. analog filmed a video, podcast Sean recorded the audio analog as well. (laughs) So you can check out the Screenless Saturdays trailer on YouTube. We talk about living a screenless Saturday life. So once a week, you can throw your phone in a drawer and go out and get lost with someone. Live without screens. There's three different ways to do it. We'll put a link to it in the show notes so you can identify whether the simple... Or the, I'm sorry, the easy, the intermediate, or the more aggressive way to live screenless on Saturdays. Just mm-hmm. one day a week. But you learn a whole lot about yourself in the process. Yeah. The second tip I have for you is something I call all-day grayscale. Like, while it's light outside, turn your phone to grayscale. Why is that? Well, you can do it on any type of phone, iPhone or Android phone. You go into your settings. They don't make it really easy, but just Google iPhone grayscale, you'll find it's relatively simple once you have the instructions. And you go in there, turn your phone to grayscale, and it makes it so boring and it's not enticing anymore. And when your phone is less enticing, you spend less time on the phone. You're not worried about getting on the Instagram, TikTok, and so forth as much because you've rendered them Mm. much less enticing. Number three is social media detox. How do we do that? We remove all social media apps from our phone. No more Instagram, no more TikTok, no more Twitter, no more Facebook, no more Yik Yak, Ryan. (laughs) 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 And the reason we do that doesn't mean we can't visit those things. We can set aside time to visit them on our own from our desktop. Or if I really want to post a picture to Instagram or a video, I can go download the app post it, and then remove the app from my phone. So that's your third tip here, the third best practice. Number four, I call this time-restricted digital fasting. And so it's just like fasting when you're eating. Mm -hmm. So time-restricted intermittent fasting, Mm -hmm. where you go 18 hours without food or 12 hours or whatever. Is there a period of the day? Maybe it's from 8 p.m. until 8 a.m., where you can have a digital fast Mm. and you simply put your phone in a drawer or in its location for a period of time during that, those fasting hours, you still have access to it if you absolutely need it in an emergency, Mm -hmm. but otherwise you're fasting from the screen, not all day, but for a 12 hour window throughout the day. Mm. And if you want to get, if you want to get aggressive, maybe it's longer than 12 hours. Mm. The next one is connected to that. Cal Newport calls it the foyer rule. Or if you're rich, it's the foyer rule. Or you can be pretentious. (laughs) (laughs) But you repeat myself. (laughs) And so Mm -hmm. the foyer means like, I don't carry my phone around like the 79th Oregon all throughout my house. Mm -hmm. I put it in one place as soon as I get home. For me, it's the junk drawer because I don't have a foyer or a foyer. But as soon as you walk in, I have a very tiny kitchen and there's a junk drawer there. And I'll just put the phone in that drawer so I have access to it. If I need to get to it, I need to make a phone call, I want to send a text message. It's not on the couch with me or at the dining room table with me or in bed with me. Mm. I've restricted my access to my phone while I'm at home. Mm. I still can use it if I need to, but I'm not pulled around by the tug of the glowing screen. Mm. And then finally... The last best practice here is eliminating the top three tech distractions in your life. So that could be your television, or Mm -hmm. maybe it's your television in the bedroom. Getting the TV out of the bedroom radically improves your sex and sleep life. 
So not having a TV in the bedroom was a big one for me. Not having email on my phone, huge distraction for me because someone has the opportunity to really mess up my day just by sending me an email that I've, when I say mess up my day. It's not like it ruins my day, but now I feel compelled. Oh, you know, I really have to respond to Danny. He said it was urgent, right? Mm-hmm. And so now his urgency has become my emergency. Mm-hmm. And so these tech distractions, for other people, it's games, right? If you have games on your phone, constantly going to the games. Or for me, at one point, it was the news app. That was another tech distraction I had to remove because the news was stressing me out. And so yeah, find what dude. are the top three things that distract you in removing those from your life? That's one of the great ways to simplify your screen time. I saw a stat. I forget what it was, but it was mind-blowing. The amount of couples getting divorced who cited Candy Crush, like legitimately the game Candy Crush, as one of the reasons why (laughs) they were splitting up. Not the reason, but like in a list of reasons, Candy Crush was listed in like, I want to say it was 30% of, 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 yeah, of divorcees. One of the stats in Love People Use Things is millennials say, the majority of millennials, so it's over 50%, have texted someone else during sex. Mm. Man, I put my phone on silent during sex before because it was going off. <laughs> <up. laughs> I'm like, Jesus, this is distracting. <laughs> Did you enjoy this standalone Patreon highlight? If so, you can listen to full episodes of the Minimalist Private Podcast available exclusively on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash the minimalists or click the link in the description. Your support keeps our podcast and YouTube channel 100% advertisement-free.